today on stuff that should have been done a long time ago, we're going to be working on this 1999 Oldsmobile Intrigue. Now, the owner bought it a couple of weeks ago, and the person she bought it from, their kid, put it into a tree and damaged this side. They've had the front end pulled out a little bit and a new headlight put in before they sold it, but the mechanic that was fixing it for them seriously screwed up. When he put the lower ball joint back together on this side, he left the ball joint mount loose. There are three bolts that hold it on. Two of them were wobbling in the hole. So, of course, that affected the handling. It also caused the wheel bearing on this side to wear out prematurely. I'm guessing the radiator was damaged as well, because the issue that we're fixing today happens to be a coolant leak. Not sure if it's the water pump or if it's something else because on these engines they have a few hoses on that side that can cause problems. Now I've already replaced the clamps on the upper radiator hose because they were very, very old and wore out and the hose wasn't sealing properly so it would leak at the thermostat housing and down here where it goes into the radiator. Um, one of the things that you can do to check and see how much radiator fluid you have without taking the cap off when the engine's warm is to squeeze the upper hose. You can kind of hear that there's air movement inside there which means that there's air all along the top of the radiator and it's being forced out into the burp tank here. So that means that this leak not only is constant but considering this was topped up just yesterday it's also pretty bad. Um, obviously the first step is going to be to take off the serpentine belt, disconnect the electrics, and see what I can see about the, uh, see if I can find where the leak is coming from after I top it up. And now I just had this car at the car wash and wash the engine off. Um, you want to be very careful when you do that with a pressure washer. You want to stand at least a foot and a half, two feet back and let just the very finest mist and air pressure clean the engine off. There was a huge mouse nest right there because this car had been sitting for two years before it was purchased, so that was what I was trying to clean off, but it also gave me an opportunity to get down in there and see where I can find that it's leaking water. So I guess let's start getting things out of the way. Actually first will be to run the engine to get it a chance to leak after I top it up, then I'll be able to look for the leak. Right. Well, I topped it up and ran the radiator, topped the radiator up and ran the car again, and of course it started leaking right away. Uh, so I got the accessories out of the way. I'm looking for the highest point that the water is dripping from and following it down. Now, the light's going to be a pain in the butt, but I think you can see it. Maybe we all know what that is, don't we, kids? Silicone. That goes to a bracket arm because for some reason GM in their infinite wisdom decided to run the lines to the heater core through the bracket that not only bolts and mounts the alternator but also the tensioner pulley. And of course since we got the belt off everything gets a spin and a wiggle to see what it is and so far it seems like that idler pulley and the alternator the only two things that are making any noise now this one you can't hear it on camera but it's got a very very high pitched very quick cheap chirp like a, a mouse squeak or something at low speed and then when you spin it faster it starts to get a little bit of a whir but anyway this tensioner bracket is separate from the water pump thankfully but it has two plastic elbows, one right here and one underneath. I don't know if you can get it. Yeah, right there. That's the second one right there. Now, when GM made these plastic elbows, I think they knew they were going to break. I think that's why they did it. And for a long time, you could only get replacement plastic elbows. Because most of the time, when you try to take this bracket off, it, they would break. At least one of them. Well, now, finally, GM has decided to start making them out of aluminum, which is the uh, replacement set that I got. I got a new water pump, new water pump gasket, separate from the water pump, uh, 
the water pump comes with its own, but I wanted to make sure that I had a separate gasket in case I didn't need to use the water pump so that I could return it. Uh, got the new water pump, the new water pump gaskets, and new elbows. Now, if you don't break those plastic elbows, you can just replace the little rubber O-ring gaskets like on most of these. But, if you do break them, they're about 11 bucks for both of them in a pack from O'Reilly's. So, yeah. Stop using silicone, get the right parts. Especially on a car that uses something as simple as O-ring gaskets. Please! As I was saying, the elbows break. There's supposed to be ends on them. Like, what's stuck in there? Now, I didn't break these. These were already broken. They just tried to glue them in with silicone. Not only was the top one broken, but the bottom one is broken as well. Let's see if I can get it. There it is. Hot. And this is still very, very warm, because I didn't let the engine cool down before I took it apart, as you can probably tell by the steam coming up. But yeah, I have no idea if the other end of that nozzle is stuck in that hole. I have no idea if there's anything stuck down where the lower pipe goes in on the water pump. What I do know is I want to find the son of a bitch who put this much silicone on these parts instead of spending the eleven dollars to replace them and beat his head in. Silicone is not an end-all fix-all. Quit using it. If you've got a leak, fix it proper. Don't cheap out because somebody else down the line, usually me, has to come in and fix your mistake. Here you are. The uh, other end of the pipe was stuck in the hole. The other pipe wasn't even broken. They could have just replaced the gaskets. You wouldn't have had to use any silicone. Or they could have gone down and spent the $11. $11. On new heater hose fittings. That's it. $11 could have made the difference. Could have kept this engine from leaking radiator fluid. Had I not known that there was a leak and informed the owner to keep refilling it until she had time to bring it over so I could fix it, she could have blown her up in her engine or seized it. There could already be damage in there because of this stupid mistake. This $11 mistake. They got so crazy with the silicone, they even got it on one of the mount bolts for the bracket that doesn't touch any of the water. Sometimes it's not going to be $11. Sometimes it's going to be $50, or $75, or $100. But it's still a hell of a lot cheaper than the $250 to $2,000 you can spend replacing your engine because somebody wanted to use silicone and all your radiator fluid went away. Get the right parts. Don't make mistakes. If you're gonna do a job, do it right the first time. That way people like me don't have to bitch at you online. Right, well, there we are. Eleven dollars for that one tube. And it would have been a couple of cents for that lower tube. And the radiator leak is fixed. Radiator leak is fixed. I've already topped the radiator up, revved the engine up and added more. Got good pressure. Well, don't have pressure in this yet. I gotta open the bleeder. You can see it right there. A little screw. But I am getting water out of the burp tube. Let's see if I can find it with the camera. Well, there we go. I do get water out of that every now and again. Kind of spurts. So once I open the bleeder, drain the system of air. I could double check to make sure there's no leaks, but yeah. I also have to put this bracket back on. It goes right in here like this, on that stud on the alternator, and then that stud right there on the left, above the wiring loom. That's just to keep the uh, torque of the engine from pulling on the bolt, bolt belt hard enough that it uh, moves the alternator and breaks all the mounts that the alternator's held on by. But yeah, $11 to fix that. That's it. Enough with the silicone.